In the heart of winter 1937, a darkness fell over Nanjing that would mark its history with a brutal scar, visible even decades later. This was not merely a battle, it was a massacre, a horrific display of human cruelty that unfolded over six weeks in the then capital of the Republic of China. The Nanjing Massacre, also known as the Rape of Nanking, saw the deaths of an estimated 300,000 civilians and disarmed soldiers. The streets of Nanjing ran red, not just with blood, but with the broken spirits and lives of countless individuals. This event is not just a relic of the past, it is a mirror reflecting the dire consequences of unchecked power and human indifference. As we delve into this dark chapter of history, we seek not only to remember those who suffered and perished, but also to learn from this extreme instance of human cruelty. What happened in Nanjing goes beyond the boundaries of a city. It is a poignant reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink and the heights of courage it can achieve in its response. Prior to the outbreak of hostilities in Nanjing, the political and military landscape in both China and Japan was charged with tension. The Second Sino-Japanese War, which began in 1937, was a culmination of escalating conflicts between the two nations. Japan's imperial ambitions were set against China's struggle for national unity and modernization. The events leading up to the Japanese invasion of Nanjing were marked by a rapid advancement of Japanese forces into Chinese territory. This military campaign was characterized by a strategy of swift and overwhelming force, intended to subdue Chinese resistance quickly and decisively. As the Japanese army approached Nanjing, the fate of the city hung precariously. The Chinese military, plagued by internal divisions and lacking in modern equipment, prepared for a defense that would ultimately prove tragically insufficient against the impending onslaught. The Japanese military's approach to Nanjing was marked by a calculated and relentless siege strategy. As they encircled the city, cutting off supply lines and bombarding it from the air, the intent was clear, to force a swift surrender through overwhelming firepower and psychological warfare. The resistance mounted by Chinese forces was spirited but ultimately doomed by a lack of coordination and resources. The defenders made several valiant stands, causing significant but not decisive delays to the Japanese advance. The plight of the civilian population became increasingly desperate as food, water, and medical supplies dwindled. As the siege wore on, the conditions within Nanjing grew increasingly dire. The surrounding chaos and breakdown of social order began to foreshadow the terrible events that would follow the city's fall. On December 13, 1937, after weeks of relentless siege, Nanjing fell to the Japanese Imperial Army. The fall of the city was rapid and marked by a breakdown of Chinese defenses, which collapsed under the strain of continuous combat and lack of reinforcements. In the immediate aftermath of the capture, the situation for both the remaining soldiers and the civilian population became perilous. Reports of mass executions began to surface, signaling the start of a campaign of terror that would horrify the world. The rapid advancement of Japanese troops into the city and the disorganized retreat of Chinese forces created a chaotic environment where violence became rampant. This period marked the beginning of one of the most brutal massacres in modern history. The days following the Japanese takeover of Nanjing were characterized by widespread violence and atrocities. Soldiers embarked on an orgy of killing, rape, and looting that was unprecedented in its scale and ferocity. Civilians, irrespective of age or gender, were subjected to unspeakable acts of brutality. Key sites within Nanjing, such as the city's safety zones and refugee camps, became centers of unimaginable horror. The safety zone, established by foreign nationals to shelter civilians, was overwhelmed by the sheer number of people seeking refuge and the relentless violence that spilled over its borders. The massacre continued unabated, with Japanese forces using increasingly sadistic methods to kill and terrorize the population. This period witnessed some of the most heinous acts of the entire massacre, leaving scars on the city and its survivors that would last a lifetime.
The stories of those who lived through the Nanjing Massacre are heart-wrenching and provide a deeply personal perspective on the atrocities. Survivors recount tales of loss, fear, and unimaginable cruelty that offer a more intimate understanding of the human cost of the massacre. International observers, including diplomats and journalists who were in Nanjing at the time, provided first-hand accounts that were crucial in bringing the events to global attention. Their testimonies and reports have been instrumental in documenting the scale and nature of the atrocities committed. The personal stories of both the victims and witnesses are central to understanding the depth of the tragedy in Nanjing. They serve as powerful reminders of the resilience of the human spirit in the face of overwhelming adversity. The visual documentation of the Nanjing Massacre, through photographs and contemporary records, plays a vital role in comprehending the extent of the atrocities. These images, captured at great risk by journalists and residents, provide undeniable evidence of the massacre, capturing scenes of mass executions, the aftermath of rapes, and the widespread destruction of property. The analysis of these photographs helps historians and the public to grasp the scale of the violence and the human suffering that occurred. They also serve as a tool for education and remembrance, ensuring that the horrors of the Nanjing Massacre are neither forgotten nor denied. The creation of the Nanjing Safety Zone was a direct response by a group of courageous international residents in Nanjing who sought to protect civilians from the impending Japanese onslaught. This demarcated area, although officially recognized, was frequently violated by Japanese forces, yet it provided a relative haven for thousands of Chinese civilians. The efforts of figures such as John Rabe, a German businessman and other members of the international community were pivotal in saving many lives. Their diaries and communications provide critical insights into the events and the international response at the time. Despite their efforts, the limitations of the safety zone were starkly highlighted by the scale of the atrocities committed beyond and within its borders. The international response, characterized by both acts of heroic compassion and frustrating limitations, reflects the complexity of the global reaction to the events in Nanjing. Estimating the death toll of the Nanjing Massacre is a complex and contentious issue, with numbers ranging widely depending on the source. Historians and researchers have used various methods, including eyewitness accounts, burial records, and demographic data, to estimate the number of victims. These methods, while helpful, face challenges such as the chaotic conditions during and after the massacre, the destruction of records, and the passage of time, which all impact the accuracy of the death toll estimates. The consensus figure of approximately 300,000 victims underscores the catastrophic human loss but also highlights the ongoing debate and the difficulties in historical accounting. The accurate recounting of the dead is not just a matter of historical record but also a crucial aspect of justice and remembrance for the victims and their families. The aftermath of the Nanjing Massacre saw several Japanese leaders and soldiers tried for war crimes, with varying degrees of accountability enforced. The Tokyo Trials, akin to the Nuremberg Trials in Europe, sought to bring perpetrators to justice, though many argued that these efforts were insufficient and incomplete. The moral reckonings of the Nanjing Massacre extend beyond the courtroom. They challenge us to reflect on issues of military ethics, human rights, and the mechanisms of international justice. The trials and their outcomes have been a point of contention in Sino-Japanese relations and continue to influence perceptions of justice and reconciliation. Global perspectives on the massacre vary, with significant political and historical implications influencing how these events are remembered and interpreted. The dialogue between acknowledging historical truths and the pursuit of present-day diplomatic relations remains a delicate balance. The way in which the Nanjing Massacre is remembered varies significantly between China, Japan, and the rest of the world. In China, the massacre is a central element of the national memory and a symbol of resilience and victimhood in the face of foreign aggression. 
Commemorative practices and educational policies reflect the importance of this event in Chinese history. In Japan, the memory of the massacre has been more contentious, with historical revisionism and denial playing roles in national discourse. Efforts by educators and activists to confront and teach this painful history face significant obstacles, reflecting broader struggles over war memory and national identity. Internationally, awareness of the Nanjing massacre is less pronounced, often overshadowed by other events of World War II. The role of education in promoting a balanced understanding of the massacre is crucial for fostering global historical consciousness and empathy. Educational initiatives and public commemorations serve not only to remember the victims but also to educate future generations about the dangers of hatred, intolerance, and war. They are vital in ensuring that the lessons of Nanjing resonate worldwide. The legacy of the Nanjing Massacre continues to influence contemporary Sino-Japanese relations. Issues of historical acknowledgement, apology and reparations remain points of diplomatic tension and public interest in both nations. The massacre's memory plays a role in shaping national identities and international policies. The lessons of Nanjing are also pertinent to modern global conflicts. They remind us of the importance of international law, human rights protections, and the need for vigilant international communities. As new conflicts arise, the historical precedent, set by the responses to the Nanjing Massacre, offers insights into the possibilities and limitations of international intervention and justice. Reflecting on this history is not merely an academic exercise but a crucial part of understanding current global dynamics and preventing future atrocities. The continuing impact of the Nanjing Massacre underscores the relevance of history in addressing contemporary issues. The Nanjing Massacre remains one of the most harrowing examples of human cruelty in modern history. Its study is not only an act of remembrance but also a critical examination of the human capacity for both brutality and compassion. This history challenges us to reflect on our moral responsibilities and the importance of standing against violence and injustice in all its forms. We are called to action not only to remember the past, but to actively engage in preventing future atrocities, supporting educational efforts, advocating for truthful historical representation and fostering international dialogue on human rights are ways we can all contribute to a more just and peaceful world. Let the memory of Nanjing serve as a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink and the heights of courage and compassion it can reach. This is not just history, it is a lesson for the present and a guide for the future.